During the Sephora sale, I usually pick a brand that I want to deep dive on that I haven't really found the courage to pull the trigger on until that big fat discount, 20% if you see that as a big fat discount. This time it was Simi Hayes. Simi Hayes is a new brand to Sephora and I had been seeing a lot of their ads circulating on Instagram for, I don't know, a couple of years now. The main thing that you notice is this shape of the packaging. They're all like this, where they're just like these odd, they look like they're made out of Play-Doh. <laughs> They have this funky, blocky kind of thing. And I did expect them to be a little more tactile than they are. They're just virgin plastic. But I ordered one of everything that they had on the Sephora website. I have a lip gloss, two cheek products, a, a lipstick, a lip balm, a mascara, and some $40 face jewels. <laughs> I've used everything except these so far. <laughs> so we're gonna see how this goes. But I'm gonna put all this stuff on. We're going to talk about the prices. And I'll close with my final thoughts on Simi Haze as it currently exists. So let's go ahead and jump in. Simi Haze, Simi Haze, Simi, Simi, Simi Haze. I do think that I recall, but we're going to look like later on in the video, but I think I recall that Simi Hayes was founded by two sisters, one named Simi and one named Hayes. That might just be a rumor. But I have here the Make Beauty Foundation. I recently watched Hannah's video on make and I just inspired me to touch back into all this stuff because I feel like I kind of gave it a drive by. This one's a little dark for me, but like, I don't really care. I like the undertone and I feel like I can work with it regardless. Yeah, it's a little dark, but it's also like healthy looking. I don't care, I like it. Y'all, I got a new storage setup. I drove my buns out to Ikea yesterday. I was the only person at Ikea, <laughs> it was really weird. I'm finally starting to feel like this room is usable again, but if you wanna see the entire process come together as well as a bunch of other stuff, I mentioned it recently, but I'm going to be opening up a membership on my channel for the vlogs. It's not really about like the money as much as it is there being some bar for entry for people to be there who wanna be there instead of it just being open season because the vlogs, I'm sharing more of my life, you know? And I'm just particularly sensitive to criticism around it, to be honest. So, Simi Hayes, like I said, they have two cheek products. I picked up the Solar Tint Blush Duo in the shade Canyon. And they're in like packages that don't, <laughs> don't allude to what they are. I'm, I'm an Ina Garten devotee at the end of the day where it's like, put the ingredient on the top so that you know what's in the dish <laughs> kind of thing. And like, I don't know what I'm dealing with here. I, I like have to read the bottoms of them because like, would you think that a gray package would be a lip gel? No, not necessarily. And then this one is, okay, so this is the Sun Flush all over tint and I guess that makes sense that it's in pink but that's not the color of the product inside of it so I got this in the shade sand and it's kind of an orangey peach mm, I don't even know if you'd call I mean I guess you'd call it peach it's a little bit desaturated you know so either way I'm going to put it on a brush to apply it because it does dry down so like I feel like if I put it directly on my skin and then try and spread it out, I'm gonna end up doing more harm than good. And initially, this is ridiculous, but initially when I tried it, I was like, thought it was a lip color, like when I got it in the mail, cause I just ordered everything. That's kind of what I do. I just sort of say, okay, I, you know, I vibe with these colors and I'm going to just pick this up and I'll figure it out when it gets in my hands kind of thing. Well, I thought I was figuring it out when it got in my hands and turned out, it was like the ugliest lip color on me I had ever seen. And thank God it's not actually a, like meant to be a lip color because ugh, <laughs> I would have like gotten no use out of it. But it's a pretty nice cheek color. It's got a nice like matte dry down. So it does actually dry down, which I like, but I think it's a little bit interesting how they like have chosen to make so many products that all go on the same part of your face. And yet there's no like, foundation or eyeshadow or anything instead of like you know spreading themselves out to a full face they went we're gonna make a lot of cheek products and we're gonna make a lot of lip products kind of thing so I don't know it's not what I would have done <laughs> but that's why I'm the reviewer not the creator so that is that is that we're gonna get to the prices in a minute because to me all of this feels like 
Glossier. Like all of the, I don't know, slightly innovative formulas, the slightly offbeat colors and everything, it feels very, very Glossier to me. Like it's coming from a place that's inspired. It's not just like a Me Too product, but it's not giving luxury. And these prices are luxury. Like they're kind of ridiculous. Okay, next we have this. So this is, like I said, it's called the Solar Tint Blush Duo. I have it in the shade Canyon. This is the one where the colors excited me the most. Most of them I was having trouble picking a color I even wanted to wear. This one, I was having trouble picking which one I wanted to buy because they all looked really beautiful. What's weird about this is that you have two formulas of the same color. So you have a matte cream blush and a dewy sheer cream blush. And when they say matte, they mean matte. It's actually kind of phenomenal. Like, look at that. You can really see the difference in the textures there. So just on swatch, you see that that matte is like distinctly powder on the skin. It's like a super, super powder finish hybrid texture. And the other one is like a pretty traditional balm blush. It kind of reminds me of like the Charlotte Tilbury little balm blushes. Like it's very, very sheer. Kind of reminds me also of the, like the Patrick Ta ones that come in the duo. So going to take something a little bit fluffy to apply this with because the matte is a little stiff. So when you try to apply it with something that I would typically use, that's like a cream blush brush, it picks all the stuff underneath it back up. And I almost think I should use a sponge. Maybe I will. I'm gonna go dampen a sponge. I'll be right back. All right. Got my little cheapy cheap sponge here that I got in my weird beauty box, my grab bag box. And I'm gonna start with the mat. So I'm just gonna, nope, that wasn't the mat, Khaki. You had one job, one job. And it's a really lovely, you know, muted rosy color. I haven't done this yet, in case you hadn't, <laughs> in case you couldn't tell by, by my like strategizing around this, I haven't actually applied this with a sponge yet, so I hope it works. <sighs> the thing is, I can already see it kind of picking up. Hang on, I'm gonna turn my light down so you can see. Do you see how it's kind of like, eh, right there? It just, it's like it's a little too matte, and so it sticks to the sponge and not really my skin. I've had that trouble with like eyeshadows before, you know, super, super creamy or like slick eyeshadows. Sometimes they will come off on your finger really beautifully, but then they just like won't come off of your finger onto your eyelid kind of thing. So I wanted to show you in low light. I can make it work. I can make it work, but uh, the sponge is definitely the ticket <laughs> because when I tried this on yeah, that's just not ideal. I was picking back up. When I tried this like on my fingers or with a brush, it, the matte specifically picks back up so badly. Like it's really, really hard to get it to go on evenly. And I've tried it now on like makeup skin, you know? <laughs> and I've also tried it on just bare skin, just like with a little SPF on. So I'm going in with the dewy one here and just kind of trying to fill in. Oh, it's picking up so bad. Look at that. Can you see? I don't know if you can see that, but it's like, yeah, it's just picking itself back up really badly. And I'm, I am being so gentle. Hmm. Okay. It's just like not as easy as it should be, especially because the other one the first one that I put on is actually really nice. It's like really easy to use. And I'm more excited about this color, like I said. That just looks really blotchy. I'm gonna powder a little bit. Maybe that'll help kind of even out the appearance, but I don't wanna use anything too, too crazy. Here I have my 108 from BK. I'm just kind of taking the shine off of my under eyes a little bit with the Kosas powder because we are ending up kind of shiny everywhere. The only reason I'm not using the Make Beauty powder is just because I just reorganized a bunch of stuff and it's it's over there. <laughs> I just don't feel like getting up again, but I like this, it works just as well for this. I just, I mean, that's so evident. It's so evident how you can't like get it to go on smoothly. It is so obvious and I'm just so particular about blush. I mean, for these prices, it should be perfect. Let's just let that sit for a minute. Maybe I'll go back in. We'll see. 
but I mean once that happens it's pretty hard to remedy because it's kind of the same thing as like you messed up and you like wiped off part of your foundation while you were trying to like fix your eye or something patching something is so hard it really has to go on evenly to begin with and let's just say I mean I work with blushes all the time of all different kinds of formulas and things seldom do that we have three lip products here and one of them looks like a sample okay this is the tiniest thing I've ever seen and it's the one that I actually like the most and it is the shade dune in their super slick lip balm I'm gonna swatch all three of these I got so many compliments when I wore this the first time it was my haul video for the Sephora sale and everybody was just like these are the best colors on you so the color of the lip balm is quite lovely oh I forgot I said I might use, I mean, this isn't, we can still do it, but I said we might use this. This is their, what's it called? Velvet Blur Matte Lip Balm. And we might be able to use that as a blush today. So that's so pigmented. I might be able to remedy this situation, but it also starts to go in like that almost candy apple red, like fuchsia direction that I love objectively, but it's kind of hard for me to wear, so. Ooh, it could still go sideways. And then we have just the lip gel. And the only reason it even looks as pink as it does is because I've used it over another product. It had a little bit on the wand, but I like it. It's just like, again, it's a very basic lip gloss. I think we can fit all of those on my face, maybe. I don't know. Let's start with this one. The I, I, This is just not a good like lip color on me, but I'll show you anyway. It's a very like blotted lip kind of thing. I don't want to put like a ton ton on. Cause I mean, it just, it just carries the look away of it's all. So the reason this doesn't look exquisite on me, I mean, it's okay, but it doesn't look incredible on my lips. It's just because everything turns pink on me anyway. And so it already being so irreverently pink, <laughs> it's just a little bit screaming. So for those people who like that blotted lip, this could be an okay formula. It's just a little hard to manage because this is an odd shape. It's just perfectly round. I don't know. I mean, I'm just being a reviewer at the end of the day, right? It's just difficult. Like I get the aesthetic appeal of that. You know, it's kind of like when you go to McDonald's and everything's just pleasantly round. You're just like, eh. I don't necessarily associate that with food, but it's very pleasantly round. And like, that makes me kind of like comfortable. I don't know. So, you know, with this outfit, with these colors, I feel like this color does work, but I think it's gonna work better on my cheeks. But yeah, it's quite pigmented, quite pigmented. I barely have to put any of it on and it starts to dry, not dry down, but like dry a little bit, you know what I mean? Cause it's matte pretty quickly. It doesn't really have a lot of slip to it at all. It's kind of grippy. I don't dislike it. I don't dislike it. I'm not in love, but it's pretty. And that's what it looks like blotted. Kind of looks like Generation G when you blot it. Generation G is the blotted lip color from Glossier. Let's go in with that on my cheeks and then we'll clean up on my lips. It's looking a little wild. I'm gonna go on the back of my hand with this so that I only pick up the amount that I want to pick up. I'm gonna go in with something kind of small-ish. Yikes, yikes, okay. Do you see how that color is just kind of two-dimensional on me? That's not a fault of the, the product. It's just <laughs> the way that that color behaves on me. It doesn't have enough gray, honestly, enough like neutrality to it. It's like when you try and dye your hair brown when it's like bright, bright blonde and you have to fill in like this needs to be filled with like a peach in order for it to work. And currently it's just kind of a flat hot pink and nothing is sticking there now. Mm. <laughs> I can only really get so frustrated. It's just makeup at the end of the day. Like I don't really care, but it is, it is annoying because I paid for this stuff. I'm gonna touch back up so that we can get my lips back to looking normal and I just scratched my eye, so. It does stain, as you can see, it stains a little bit. I'm like wondering if it's got a little bit of that like pH reactive ingredient in it because I mean, it turns like that distinctly flat hot pink. And like the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow in pink does have a little bit in it. I don't think that it's always a bad thing, 
But when it gets to be like, it always turns, you can just tell by looking at it. And I don't know. I don't know if that's what that is, but we'll see. Okay, so the other thing, and I mean, this is just, I love this stuff. It's super pretty, but I hate using it because it's just, it feels, it feels so skimpy and tiny and cheap. Like using something this small. Like, I think this was like $26, like get real. But it's easier to apply because it's so tiny and it does start to bring things together. I wanted to show it to you without my lip liner, but it actually looks better. It's skipping pretty badly. It looks better with my lip liner. So this is the khaki lip liner from Thrive. So that, unlike the blush, it's actually really complimentary to my undertones because the brown is just kind of a sheer layer of color on top of my lips that you can see through there, which have a little bit of blue and a little bit of pink in them. And it just makes it kind of go in this like rosy, taupey, tawny kind of haze. And I like it a lot. I like it a lot, a lot. It's comfortable. It's it's just a really like, it seems like something that would come as a, like a bullet lipstick, you know, just like a sheer cream lipstick. And when you really think about it like that, it makes this all the sillier. <laughs> it just feels silly. It's a little silly goose is what it is. And finally we have that lip gloss and I mean, it's very pretty. I guess I'll throw a little bit on top. I don't want to get it all over the applicator. There we go. A little bit of paint. I could see the package being kind of a status symbol, you know, just like pulling this out of your bag and somebody going, ooh, what is that, you know? But other than that, it's pretty forgettable. Just being honest, let's open these up. Okay, wait. It was $40 for these. I thought it was gonna be, for, I don't know why. I get, I just bought everything. I didn't really like think that hard about it. I thought it was gonna be like a full sheet of gems, not three looks. I got three looks, three looks, three looks. That's exactly what's happening here. I think I'm just going to zoom through something kind of minimal on my eyes so that we can get to putting these on. So let's do that. So this is, what do they call this? Uh, mm, you know what, y'all? The printing on it is really blurry. It looks like when they print something on like an M&M. So I cannot tell it's something lash. And we will find out in a moment <laughs> when I can actually read a screen. So this is supposed to be a tubing mascara in my experience. It's beautiful and it wears well, but it doesn't come off in tubes. It comes off, uh, it doesn't come off in like raccoon eyes or anything, but it does resolve a little bit. It's super pretty. It's very like lengthening. The thing that kind of surprised me about it is just how like all of this feels so <laughs> kind of forced, right? Like all this packaging feels so over designed like intentionally really aesthetic and then this feels like an afterthought it's just black like yeah it has a teeny tiny oh easy lash that's what it's called easy lash on the side it says it on the bottom bottom it's like really hard to read but easy lash clean lift mascara and it says that in like embossing on the side a little bit but other than that like it feels like an off the shelf component. I like the wand though, the wand is awesome. It's got this like really cool, like, I mean, yeah, it's just kind of a regular, it's kind of like the one that um, Thrive uses or really pretty much any brand uses when they're doing 
to be mascaras, but something about this one feels like it's a little deeper. It might be because of the formula, but it feels like it's like gripping my lashes more, which is nice. When it just slips off my lashes, it freaks me out because like then it just goes everywhere. I love when it kind of slows me down a little bit. But as you can see, it's kind of hard to build any kind of chunky volume. It's extremely, extremely like separating and lengthening. Amanda just did a really great, Amanda Z just did a really great a YouTube short about looking at the wand if you wanna know how a mascara is gonna make your eyelashes look. This makes my eyelashes look like that. <laughs> kind of spread out and spiky and thin, but it kind of builds infinitely, she says as she gets it all over her eyeball. It is lightweight like super duper lightweight. It doesn't feel like a typical tubing mascara. And I feel like that's sort of what keeps it from behaving like a typical tubing mascara is that they did really lighten the formula up. But for that reason, when it rinses off, I do feel like it's, you know, it, calling it a tubing mascara is a little, a little bit of a stretch. All right, no. <laughs> uh, let's talk about these here. Eye jewels. <sighs> I feel like this is them, you know, I'm sure that there's some kind of personal connection here, but it does feel like capitalizing on Euphoria's success a little bit. So let's see here. I play gem pack. I wonder if these are reusable at all. We're gonna go, I think, hmm, I think I wanna do the gold ones. I think that's gonna go the best with this look. And I think maybe I need tweezers. I'm gonna grab my tweezers. BR, BRB, 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 RB and RBs. Hi, hi. All right, I'm gonna try and just be normal here. Directions for use, peel and gently stick directly onto the skin to remove, gently peel off or rinse with warm water and soap. So they're not reusable. E. okay. Will these? Whoa. <laughs> They're like kind of staticky. <laughs> ah! I don't want to stick them to myself because then they'll lose their stick, but we're gonna start like there. And then that's like not my best look not my best work. Cause I think they're supposed to have a little more of a curve to them than that. And like, I just stuck them down a little bit straight, but it's fine. That doesn't look good at all. <laughs> um, hang on. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. They're down. They're down. <laughs> I cannot pull those back off. They are really sticky. Okay. Well, I don't feel like I'm misrepresenting here at least like, you know, ah, it. Okay, we're gonna try and, oh shit. Oops, sorry, what? Nothing? All right, I'm gonna try and do it in about the same spot. Boop. Stop it, ah, stop it, ah. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Okay. And then, this is like putting on fake eyelashes, but just like so much harder. And then you're kind of supposed to do that, I think. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> I think they're supposed to like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not used to seeing myself like this. Yeah, it does make me want, I thought that it was gonna make me want to do something minimal and just let them stand alone, but it actually makes me want to put on more makeup. You know, it makes me want to put on like liquid eyeliner and stuff because it just feels very naked. <laughs> Let's do the rest of my brows here. I mean, they function. They definitely function. And they're crazy, crazy sticky. But for that reason, it's like, once they're down, they're down, it feels like. And they say that like, you have to re rinse them off maybe. So they're uh, not reusable. All right, I'm gonna contour. <laughs> like we just gotta like bring this back on the rails somehow. Less distraction, the better. This one is so straight, like, <laughs> but I mean, you could glue 
your eyelid to your forehead with that stick on. Contour is going to hide a world of sins in terms of patchiness over here, or at least it's gonna try. And it's not the makeup, like, it's not the makeup, it's not the foundation because it didn't do it on this side, you know? And I've had that, I've just had that issue with it before. That's why I went in with the sponge, is because I wanted to try and avoid that. I don't feel anywhere near as cool as I thought I was going to with these freaking eye jewels on, okay? Let's go on their website and see what in the world, if anything, I did wrong here because it just does not look that awesome. So this is $36. One of the main things that really bugged me about shopping for this on Sephora was just that the swatches looked so wildly different from the models wearing the lipsticks. And so the color that I initially wanted is called Windburn because the swatch is this beautiful mauve shade, but on the models, like the white model had basically like it looked straight up coral, coral, peach and then the black girls they look like it's like really bright kind of salmon pink on them neither of which is conveying that lovely desaturated mauve thing that I love that you can see in the standalone swatch by the way my eyelashes are sticking to these right now it's so strange feeling. That was why I ended up with the color that I ended up with was just because I thought I was playing it safe, but also there are a lot fewer shades on the Sephora website than there are on their actual website. The thing here is this is $36 if you don't have a discount or whatever. I just picked up some stuff from YSL. They did a buy one, get one on their lipsticks. And so I tried a couple, tried a few, but if you were to buy this full price, it's like $38, $39. This is 0.1 ounces and this is 0.11 ounces. So like we're within very much the range of a YSL lipstick here, something that's just a very widely accepted, you know, luxury formula. And then we have Simi Haze. I mean, you be the judge. Like, is this, is this giving luxury for y'all? And maybe it is, maybe that's luxury for y'all, but like, I also, and I know that they're like two wildly different things and that's why it's also very strange to compare them like price wise, but like we have a metal tube. We have this just very lovely, sensuous experience. They smell like watermelon candy. That was a weird surprise for me, but that's neither here nor there. But the whole experience feels like luxury. It's extraordinarily heavy and also like, Minimal, you know, there's just something minimal about it. And what's weird to me is that I feel like Simi Haze is kind of going for something minimal, like something almost Scandi, you know, with their design, but it's so freaking chunky. Like it's just such an odd thing to hold in your hand. And like, it doesn't really help with control. I'm actually, I don't know, I have a much higher affinity for something that's a delicate in its size and shape, like a Victoria Beckham lipstick or something like that, because it's just easier to control. And then this is just, there's something very like, I don't know, it's just very unintuitive. The roundness of everything and stuff, it seems like it was form first, function, meh, you know what I mean? Like figure it out kind of thing. It's also a magnetic component. The magnet's pretty strong, but like I have plenty of things in my bag where like they just come unmagnetized and that also drives me crazy. I would rather have something snap. And the fact, I mean, this is the elephant in the room, right? The weird matte elephant in the room is that this is all virgin plastic with magnets in it. Like that is the least eco-conscious thing that they could have done in 2022. It's ridiculous. Like these are these super heavy, artificially weighted components with magnets inside of them if in most cases that are this like frosted, honestly, what does this look like to me? It took me a minute to figure it out. It reminds me of the texture of like a picnic table or something at a park. You know, it's got that kind of like faux soft, organic kind of texture to it, but it's made out of plastic. And those are usually made out of, I mean, this might just be a memory that only I have, but like they're usually made out of recycled materials. This feels like it should be made out of something recycled. And what a cool idea that would be, especially if you're making something gosh darn great. No one's buying, you know, mixed plastic packaging. I think it could be very futuristic and very almost like, a dystopian futuristic thing to hold in your hand if they were actually buying the like matte recycled plastic 
of all the different colors that no one else wants to buy because that's like something that's really hard to recycle. And they were breaking it down, mixing it together and like homogenizing it into their components. And then we were dealing with all gray or brown or whatever components and they were recycled. You know what I mean? It would be this like kind of chic reminder in your hands of like what's happening to all the virgin plastic. Unfortunately, this is all virgin plastic. And like that is, <sighs> it feels so tone deaf to do this. This just feels so insane to me. Like it's just so insane. That's my piece on that. Oh my God. Okay. I'm sorry. I bought this on, on Sephora and we're going to Sephora. Their website is really annoying to navigate. It's set up like the Zara website where it's just like, here's an article of clothing. And you like scroll down a little further. They're like, here's a splash image. You know what I mean? You like don't see all the products at once. I just want to see all the products at once. Call me old. I don't care. Okay. So they carry five shades of the Sun Flush all over face liquid tint blush. This is $35 and it is 0 0.09 ounces. Less product in here than there is in here. Okay, so that's $35. That's like around the same price as a Violette stick and I know that people are always saying that there's a difference in amounts between something that's liquid versus something that's in a stick. That's fine. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to compare perfectly apples to apples. These are just the things that are sitting in front of me right now. But I mean, geez, like everybody complains about the matte bronzers from Milk being like $22 for 0.19 ounces, literally twice as much as is in here. This is the Violette Bisou blush. This is 0.25 ounces, T more than twice as much product as is in here. And like, not just the actual amount of product, but like the minimal packaging and the like elegance of the delivery system. I wonder if this just like pulls off. No, that'd be cool if it did. I'd just be like, repl that'd be so, actually that would be cool, right? Cause a lot of stuff is like that. You know, the Cure Weiss and stuff like that where you can actually pull the components apart and replace the inner container. I would be a little less annoyed if you could keep this plastic part and pull out and replace the inside the way that you can with like a House of Siage lipstick case. You know, that would be neat. It's like they didn't do any research. $35 for that. I do like, I do like that on the Simi Hayes landing page, even in my search Simi Hayes, one of the first things that comes up is Kaja. I'm, it just comes to mind. It's this very like cutesy packaging where, you know, you could almost underestimate the product inside, but Kaja is the other end of the spectrum where it's like they kind of sell themselves short on the packaging and the formulas are drop dead gorgeous. And this is, this is the opposite. So then we have the super slick tinted lip balm. It's $28 for this. What? Are you kidding me? $28? I think that that's how much like a Thrive lipstick is. I'm just getting incensed now. 0.13 ounces and this is, there's 0.13 ounces of lipstick in this Thrive container for I think that same price. This super slick lip balm, $28 for 0.03. Ounces. I'm sorry, I gotta calculate that. I wanna know how much that is per ounce. 28 divided by 0 0.03. Girl, you want me to pay almost $1,000 an ounce for your lip gloss, for your lip balm? Fam, this is ridiculous. This is so silly. Like, what are you paying for? This is not luxury. Like, this isn't luxury. They need to hear that, okay? Like, stop it. <laughs> Sephora needs to hear that. Sephora picking this brand up, I'm sure it's no skin off their nose, you know what I mean? But like, this does kind of degrade my, I don't know, my kind of like image of how Sephora vets their products. Like, to me, this feels so half-baked. That's, this is absurd. And this is driving me crazy, the symmetry, lack thereof. Uh, I stuck it wrong once and it's just like that now. Plus you can see the band because it's like not on there right. And like this one is, uh, ow. We'll try and take it off before the end of the video. <laughs> 
be funny. Like, just make a big red spot on me. So that one comes in seven shades. One of them is clear. If you want, if you want to pay a thousand dollars an ounce for a clear lip balm, you just do that. Okay, 42 smackers for the Solar Tint Cream Blush Duo. This, again, the shades are gorgeous. But I will say, like, this Canyon, it doesn't look quite as nuanced in person as it does on, on the site, but I don't know, maybe I'm just salty. Either way, for this, you get 0.17 ounces or five grams, which is half of what you would get in a Makeup by Mario stick, which I have put a bunch of my stuff away. But the Makeup by Mario stick is 10.5 grams for $30, and this is five grams for $42. Makeup by Mario just, I'm, it's, they're just better, okay? $30 for the Lunar Lip Gel Lip Gloss, which is one of the least impressive things. The only reason that I like it is because it's, it's just a, a lip gloss that happens to be pretty, but it's very unimpressive it doesn't have a fragrance, it doesn't have a slip to it, it doesn't have any uniqueness to the formula. You can't really see the sheen that much, it's just kind of like at the end of the day, it's something that's for you, you know, whether you like that color on your lips. And it's 0 0.08 ounces for $30. So that means that this is a little bit more than half of the amount of product that is in a Charlotte Tilbury lip gloss. The, like, Charlotte Tilbury, Tilbury is so notorious for just being like $5 too expensive for everything. You know what I mean? She makes great products, but they're just like a little more expensive than they need to be in every single case. So this being pretty much the price within a couple of bucks of a Charlotte Tilbury lip gloss and you getting half, ish a little bit more than half of the product and honestly it's like not even that remarkable of a product yeah sorry sorry you're playing in the wrong like you're in the in the deep end you, you need to be back over in the kiddie pool all right and i think finally we have oh no not finally because we still need to talk about these eye jewels a $30 mascara. Okay, a $30 Easy Lash Clean Lift Tubing Mascara that doesn't really tube. And this is a very easy comparison because my favorite mascara on planet Earth is a tubing mascara. And they give you an abundance of product in this. So this is in metal. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions. I wear crystal, which is brown. This is $24 and it is 0.38 ounces or 10.7 grams of mascara. This thing lasts me like I can stretch it. I can stretch it to like six months sometimes, which is terrible. You shouldn't do that, but I can sometimes. This is $6 more expensive and you get 0.33 ounces. So less product for more money. Sorry. And it's actually like not that good. So I mean, it's, it's okay. It's just not a tubing mascara. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Actually, I have to come back to that. Speaking quickly about these, the iPlay gem sticker pack, $38 divided by three. That's about $13. That's about $7.50. Seven? No. $6.50. <laughs> Sitting on each one of my eyeballs right now. That's Sully, okay? A sheet of six sleek stickers, three applications, that makes it easy for anyone to create a crystal embellished eye look with no glue or a mess. Who cares? What I was going to mention is like, when you search for the brand Semi Haze on the Sephora website, like I said, it comes up with other things that are kind of in the same, you know, in market customer base that you might wanna look at these other brands, other products that are comparable. We've got the Say Do Blush, which is a great liquid blush, a great liquid blush in beautiful colors, okay? And you know, Say is not like, I'm not the president of their fan club. I have to admit it's a great blush, okay? Seven colors and it is $25 and you get 0 0.40 ounces. I know I'm getting into the math here and it's very annoying, but again, this is, I'm sorry, what? This is a quarter, a quarter of the product that you get in a Say blush and it is $10 more expensive. And the Say is a better formula in better shades. The other thing that I see compared to it here is the Danessa Myricks Vision Flush. Such a gorgeous product, such a gorgeous product. I love it so much. Bread and butter and Nutcracker are two of my favorite colors to wear. It is 0.21 ounces, so still twice as much product 
and it is $15 less expensive. Yeah, I don't know who they, th honestly, I don't know who they think they are. Who do they think they are? Because they come out of the gate being like, yes, we're gonna charge these prices for this teeny tiny amount of product in this ridiculous packaging and we're going to tell you it's luxury. It's almost stupid to sit here and try and compare things to this because it's so easy. It's so easy. Throw a rock and you can find a better value. So I do wanna read about the company itself. Let's see, about us. Created by twin sisters, Simeon Hayes, Simi Hayes Beauty is a journey through dualities, AM and PM, form and function, minimal and maximal, products that enhance, not cover, and textures as unique as you are. We believe that makeup should be fun and expressive, never restrictive, except if you're poor. All of our products are crafted with only the highest quality ingredients and housed in sculptural packaging inspired by Simi and Hayes' love of fine art. I want, that's it? There's nothing else? I don't get to know anything about you. Mm. Nope, there is Simi and Hayes. Oh God, what are they, 12? Palestinian DJ duo, Simi and Hayes Kadra have been players in the fashion scene for much longer than you'd think. The pair has been sitting in the front row of shows such as Chanel from as early as 15 years old. Uh, they're also the younger sisters of Kardashian close friend, Fai Kadra. Fai is one of, uh, Kendall's best friends. Got it. Okay. So, I mean, would it be a leap to assume that these two young ladies came from money to begin with? I'm just gonna make an assumption. And for that reason, it seems like they just don't really care. They don't really care that this just doesn't stack up. It doesn't stack up from a formula performance standpoint. It doesn't stack up from any kind of eco-consciousness standpoint. It doesn't stack up from a pricing standpoint versus the actual amount of product that you're getting when you go onto Sephora. Like, they need to be specifically selling to their close friends the same way you would with an MLM. It's like, buy from me, buy from me. Who cares what the price is? Give me some money. You know what I mean? Like it, there needs to be some connection to them as the face of the brand in order for you to uh, care because I do not care. This is Glossier, except Glossier can do it better. And everything about it is half baked. And it's like, it's just dripping with entitlement. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm making a lot of leaps here, but like there's just something so crappy about knowing that I put, even with a discount that I put my money towards this, and it just feels like they don't care if I like it. It's a very take it or leave it kind of thing, and I will say I'm gonna leave it. I don't get it, and it just feels like just another money-making venture from somebody who already has plenty. There's my cynicism for the day. And like, I understand that, you know, if you were to try to like extrapolate what I just said about any of the other brands that I use, like the luxury brands and stuff, like you could say that about a lot of the fashion houses and stuff like that. Like they all had to start somewhere. But first of all, when you're starting out, I mean, obviously they've got ins. I feel like you should come out with your best work initially. Even Glossier had to do that. And it's all about timing. It's all about accommodating or really like blowing the minds of your target demographic in a way that stands out against everything else. And right now, what's most important, especially to, I don't know, rich Gen Z, do y'all exist? Is that a demographic? Are there a bunch of like teenagers clamoring to pay $45 for a blush? I don't know if there are, but for me, it comes down to the same thing that it always comes down to when we're talking about like luxury pricing, which they have placed themselves squarely in with these price points. Are we talking about a luxury experience? Are we talking about something that as I'm interacting with it, I feel like I am getting to like borrow the legacy for a moment. Am I getting eye champagne? Am I getting skin champagne? Am I getting lip champagne? And I'm not, I might be unlike other people using this. Like there might be people who are, who like feel the fine art of this. I don't, I just don't, you know? And it's not because I'm a snob. I mean, I am a snob, but if I were that big of a snob, I would pretend to get this. You know what I mean? I would pretend that like, as, as art mom, like I got it, you know? And I don't get it. 
I purely don't get it and I think that it's ridiculous. And especially as a reviewer, it is literally my responsibility on this platform to tell you that this is ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? Like, even if it was just me reviewing saying like, oh, you know, I think I kind of like it, blah, blah. But like, it is my responsibility to tell you not to spend your money on this because it's ridiculous. So that's how I feel about this silly stuff. I did say we were gonna try and take these off before the end of the video. So let's do it because your girl does not want this on her face anymore. Silly, 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 silly. Let's see if I can. Okay, all right, all right, okay. It stayed stuck, but I could have, I don't know, I think that now that it's got makeup on it, yeah, there's no way that's sticking ever again. I could maybe clean the back of it off with something, but like it would probably come apart. But they don't really seem super concerned with reusability, do they? No, they don't. Anyway. I love y'all. I hope you liked this. If you did, I'll stick my last in-depth review. It was of the Makeup by Mario palette, which I did use today, the new one. I'll stick that right here for your enjoyment. And thank y'all for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you made it all the way to the end of the video. I love y'all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.